Hello there everybody and welcome to a new video for Age of Wonders 4. In this one I got my first Necromancer build since the Wyvern update and it's for the Dark Culture because I figured that these guys deserved some Necromancer attention for good. It's also a Dragon Lord build so you need the DLC for the uh, Dragon Ruler but this build works perfectly fine without the DLC you just should use a Wizard Ruler instead so I got the usual mix-up I'm talking about the background culture body mind traits tomes military and strategy you will find the timestamps down below and let's get started so I went here for a quite unusual combination. Artifact Horde as well, I keep picking the, that up when I'm going with dragons because the extra mana income is so good and the extra artifacts you plunder will make your heroes after you picked up your dragon a lot stronger. So really good stuff, but very easily replaceable with stuff like runesmiths or, well, I don't know. I personally think runesmiths would be the best combination you could also go for Chosen Uniters. While the Order Affinity might look a little bit weird, the Vassal game style is very synergistic with Shadow. So, the second slot, Ritual Cannibals, I'm personally a big fan of that with Dark Culture for two reasons. For one, it bolsters up our city growth by just clearing out the map. I love this. Don't underestimate this. This is actually quite a lot of mana and food you get out of this. And the other part is the corpse eating skill is very, very useful for this build because we will have not too much support for the most time for the early and the early mid game so this is really really handy because you can heal your units up quite well with that so on the body and mind trade i went for nightmare mounts here a replaceable thing but it is highly synergistic with this build as a whole due to the fact that we have the vicious killer ability on these now that's new since the women update and the unit inflicts double morale penalties when they kill an enemy and the interesting part here is your pursuers have now a nightmare mount and the hound masters we will be using in this build too as well so on top of that of course your standard dark knight and this means you have three units that are totally worth taking the killing blow because it will hamper the enemy's morale quite decently also the intimidating aura thing is really really not bad either the elusive mind trade well I took this again for the sake of damage mitigation but I do see here various things that can work really well stuff like overwhelm tactics for more damage because you will end up quite swarmy with that build i can't really see that working but also the uh, trade i forget oh keep forgetting its name the one that allows you to deal more damage when the unit's hp are low all these things would work i personally went for elusive i don't think that there is a really an ideal pick here i just found that quite useful for more damage mitigation so let's hop into the tome section so since we do play a necromancy build obviously i like to start out with the tome of souls we have now a really really good new spell called soul collection which gives us a stand a steady soul income at the cost of some gold this is something you should pull up as soon as possible it's really useful and it allows you so many things the bone golem is one massive backbone of your army because Nowadays, we have a high soul income. That means you can spam skeletons easily, and these guys can be either fused out of 30 souls or two skeletons and a spell, and you can fuse them on the on the march. Either way, the bone golems are just basically better dark warriors. They just completely will replace your tier one shock units. It's not a bad thing at all. They're just better at, in every aspect. So, soul fire doesn't cost any souls anymore and it is now a wonderful early game nuke it just falls off quite badly and you will have other things to do in the later stages of the game but early on this really really helps you to keep up the burst you require soul overflow well it is just a massive steroid and a negative buff cleanser just keep in mind costs souls and soul binders makes our battle mages and supporters well it's for one part 
boosting our soul economy so very very important and the other part is it's a 10 percent damage bonus for your battle mages and supporters so not too bad either the soul collector trait is that for heroes as well i highly recommend that because you are hungry for souls the other tier one tome to pick up here i went for tome of the horde because now we are able to just print out lots of skeletons because souls are way more abundant than previously and i just felt like this is so synergistic in many 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 ways for one of course we gain access to the spawnkin enchantment because otherwise you quickly might lack some damage so this is really useful in that regard the houndmaster also comes in super handy because he brings a throwaway unit that you can just use to mitigate damage again since we are low on support very very useful thing fury of the horde allows you to buff up all friendly tier one units and interestingly enough most of the quickly summoned battlefield units of the undead faction are tier one so you can take a lot of synergy out of that same goes for the blaze of the horde it is an aoe nuke and it can grow quite uh into quite big numbers when you summon a lot of zombies during combat for example summon irregulars is amazing for this build because actually it's able to churn out skeletons as well and it is awesome to just fill up your armies on the march and yeah i really really like this one battle seeker training is totally worth the pick and mob camp well it makes your tier one units again cheaper so if you can bring it up it's not that mandatory but it can be really 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 useful so once we hit the tier two realm pick up the tome of necromancy of course it has been updated again we have now a new unit available the corrupt soul this one is really good he has a decent attack but most importantly he can insta kill units that are low on morale or just nuke them for 3d frost damage both cases aren't too bad aren't they so this guy is summonable he's a tier 3 undead fighter unit that can float and therefore boy oh boy these guys really really ch shake up your your front line on top of that we gain access to raise zombies which allows us to mitigate the enemy and friendly fallen units or use them not mitigate use them as living shields and damage dealers and rotting explosion i love this spell zombies turn into 30 damage point bombs with that one and they apply dk so really good stuff the combo rotting explosion and raised zombies is massive but we don't stop here the necromancer is really really useful for you as well not only has he the ability to strengthen undead units and i want to point out here that he will always leave uh, keep one action point after using this so really make good use of the spell he's uh, it's meant to be spammed he also is capable of raising one body back to life and the interesting part here is you can either use it to resurrect friendly undead units or utilize enemy bodies you can only use that skill once per battle but use it you should because this is uh, the necromancers are just amazing once they get rolling you can ignore the fact that you're lacking support because you will have more than enough throwaway units that can just soak up the damage for you really good stuff necrotic magic is another little sweet power up for your battle mages and restore undead is a massive army spell at first it will be not that useful but as since we turn the entire culture of ours into undead units at some point later down the road this is just a map heal spell amazing stuff the soul well structure try to crank out in every city you have one because it's again more soul income and more mana income and they are relatively uh, cost uh, low in cost 100 gold is pretty low cost for a special province improvement and under unholy leader is really really powerful overall the support skills in the undead roster are really really good okay so after that's been dealt with I went for Doom Herald for this build. I was a little bit skeptical at first, but I really didn't find any so synergistic alternative here. Several reasons for that. So for one, Cruel Weaponry allows you to dish out massive amounts of damage once the low morale goes low, and the Banshee is another summonable undead front, um, not frontline, uh, undead 
battle mage that you can just use to fill up your ranks on the fly and most importantly it has again an aoe nuke for itself and they can dish out quite nice amounts of damage joy siphoners is an interesting pick because at first i thought it is quite useless for this build because once you go undead positive morale is not interesting for you anymore but it again destroys the enemy's morale who cares if your people cannot be happy the enemy can still be unhappy therefore joy siphoners is actually better than it looks at the first glance and well cause to spare and uh, prelude of doom are just standard spells to lower the enemy's morale even more doom depth trench is a really nice add-on since you end up evil with this build quite often it cranks out nice amounts of mana and knowledge if you are able to afford these guys okay so tier three we go of course for the tome of great transformation first because you know whiteborn is just so appealing to have all your undead units or racial undead units will have life steal henceforth which makes all your baseline roster units just so darn survivable that yeah this is so much worth it even if we have a lower resistance against spirit and fire but it is just still so strong and you are immune against negative morale henceforth as well can be really useful too people can't use the trick against you anymore that you're rolling against them so pretty good stuff fetid legion pick that up asap as well because it boosters up your hp for the entire front line again very very useful stuff since you have a lot of these units they can use some more meat on the bone so necrotic spires yeah good city structure when you have to defend your turf domain of death this build ironically enough has a pretty good city stability if you go for the dragon leader even more so and yeah nothing big to say about that desecrate structure is really cool because it cranks up your mana income even more and mana is something i cannot have too much of in this build so the other tier three tome you have several alternatives here i'm going to go over a few here but tome of summoning was for me the most interesting one of those because it is a little bit uh, easy to overlook but it is massively synergistic with this build so the thing here is it's all aimed about magic origin units now the fun part is your skeletons are magic origin units your bone golems are magic origin units and a lot of your baseline undead roster happen to be magic origin units as well so basically all of the spells in this book can be applied to your tome undead units this is really really powerful for one we gain the ability to heal all our summoned units just battlefield wide you gain the ability to just send one of those guys super saiyan i mean static charge is also another damage bonus and this can really really deal a lot of damage arcane bone bond allows you to just uh, hijack enemy magic origin units and the astral serpent i didn't find so interesting but the astral keeper was one of those units where i was actually surprised about how good they are for this build because the the astral blessing gives you the ability to finally put on some healing on a certain spot where you need it i like this one but you can go for alternatives here so let's go over these real quick i personally find a super high synergy in the tome of pandemonium because havoc magic is just really really powerful you do have a lot of battle mages and supporters in this army and vessels of chaos just allows you to utilize that even more that's one way to go inside revolution is also really good for dragon uh, heroes because it allows you to ha get more um artifacts i really really did find this interesting but way more interesting for this build a really strong competitor for the summoning tome is the tome of subjugation since we do have a lot of morale gameplay this is very very powerful intimidating aura makes the whole shtick stick even more to the enemy and uh, final ultimatum allows you to control routing enemies so you can't just pick up whatever you want with that the tyrant knight is a nice addition to your roster he gets the um nightmare mount as well so here's nothing to sneeze at and the subjugating radial if you want to use it the interesting part about the subjugating rate is that you can lower the enemy's morale 
again just right from the get-go. I'd personally recommend the Tome of Subjugation if you plan to conquer a lot of cities instead of founding them, because that's where this tome, in my opinion, really, really shines. And when it's up, when it's time for the tier four tomes, well, we gotta go for Reaper and Oblivion because affinity-wise you will be nowhere near close to anything else. But if you happened to be um opt if you happen to be uh, to opted into the pandemonium tome, you should try to get a little bit more chaos affinity because if you can chaos channeling is such a good fit for this build as well with the golden horde you get the ability to just summon a un a, a swarm of units if you need it demonic focus is so good for your battle mages because they just gain more um, power there cyan of flame is also pretty good for your frontliners makes them just even more annoying to deal with and a battle wide aoe nuke and gremlin ambushers more throwaway units are just that good to have but regularly you will go for reaper and oblivion which aren't bad choices either reaper gives you more soul income if you siege the enemy but most importantly, the Soul Siphon Siege Project comes with 6 decaying zombies, which just gives you the ability to just do whatever you want. And Mark for Death is really cool because it just kills a non-hero unit after a couple of turns. Can be really, really good. And Greater Reanimation, this is for me the superstar of this uh, thing. Because yes, the end unit dies at the end of the battle, but uh, you can just resurrect whatever you want get an exact copy under your control this can be so massive because it's a high quality undead unit you can acquire with that unlike the other things that are just pretty much battlefield crap so harvest population well i don't know i'm not a big fan of that because usually nowadays i don't need that many souls most of the time anymore but yeah reaper a a tier 5 frontliner that just does everything that you want from him he's good at sustaining himself he's good at insta killing people and you just want to have these so overall after that comes oblivion it's up to you what you want to pick up first the living fog that you can summon isn't too interesting because you have so many other summoning options that are just more synergistic with your build but i love ritual of somnia if you can apply it it can be super strong but it's hard to apply it most of the time you won't see the enemy army before things go off but um, fog of insanity is what i really love for defense because you know enemy armies go insane hell yeah the other spell here yeah sleep of oblivion is also mentionable but i find this well the tomes that we have before are way more defining for build than what comes after these are basically just the icing on the cake usually you should be able to just overrun the enemy at this point anyway Good, let's talk military. So, like I already have mentioned early on, you have not too much support, but luckily you have instantaneously access to the skeletons. And all of your tier 1 units of your baseline roster have the corpse eating ability, so they are pretty good at surviving for themselves. Since we go for a dragon ruler, or if you don't have it, you will um you could go for a support ruler also pretty useful or a aoe mage so here well it is quite simple i went for a dragon breath that nukes from afar and well it's just standard stuff you have a one-man army at your disposal early on which just mitigates a lot of your weaknesses but your baseline strategy should be just crank out as many pursuers skeletons and dark warriors as possible and get swarming as soon as you have access to bone golems try to replace your dark warriors with these and as soon as you can get hound masters these can slowly replace your pursuers but not completely because um you don't have the weakening ability and weakening is really really important after all with the dark culture you want ideally everybody weakened before your melee dudes get in there because you know you just deal 20 percent more to weakened enemies and you gain regeneration once you have access to tier 2 units warlocks are amazing because they can shred the enemy's resistances which is really good and night gods are well 
in all honesty, the better skeletons, but they are so costly that I often skip them in for the sake of hound masters or other things. Because we already have a cheap and inexpensive uh, pole arm unit that just does the trick pretty good. The really, really amazing trick here in the early games military roster is that you can pay the bulk of your units with souls and mana. You can keep your gold for the city expansion and therefore I recommend you to go as quick as you can for the Dark Knights because these guys are amazing. They won't completely replace your bone golems because they are too costly, but if you can, you should. So, on top of that, we have also a wide array of summonable units. These are really good. So if you happen to be able to have, or if you happen to have too many skeletons, use them together on the way with this spell. But most of the time, you will rely on summon regulars to just refill your ranks and corrupt soul. As soon as you have access to that guy, get as many as you can afford of these because they are very versatile very cheap, very cost efficient, and nowadays you only have to save up 100 souls for the Whiteborn transformation, so you can really invest here. That's really, really powerful to go for. Beyond that, well, you have a very, very wasteful play style. You will lose units because you are low on support. You will lose units do during the entire process of your campaigning. But it doesn't matter too much because you can refill the gaps just oh so easily. And my personal approach here was to refill the ranks, as you see here, ever with something better. So whenever something tier 1 dies, I try to get something better as a replacement. We had a heavy battle here. And I want to point out that I actually was able to beat down a high culture guy, which is the number one player currently. It's uh, it's a little bit tedious and finicky to kill off his doom stacks because he has a lot of damage. Holy, the the order damage is uh, the holy damage is really a problem for you, and it still works because you can't just summon so darn much stuff. If you happen to run into an enemy who's just plowing through your um, defenses or who's hard to kill, industrious and iron golems, rely a lot on raising zombies and keep in mind that your warlocks are able to shred defenses. You really need those guys in that scenario. You can also use your spearmen and uh, to shred the defenses if you ever have the issue that a enemy is really, really brutally um, do, um, in that uh, brutally good in that problem dark stalwart also sunders the defenses down so the biggest weaknesses of this build are therefore people that are resilient against uh, physical damage and people that are just good at uh, resisting statuses because you're relying a lot of uh, on that on with your damage and resistance against morale damage but even against that i was able to go really successful so let's talk strategy this build is early on at its weakest point luckily your one-man army dragon slash wizard king can provide you will use a lot of uh, units early on and you should get your cities as quick as possible i try to found a second city asap and then try to either conquer a neutral city as quick as possible or just roam over the land gather the xp open up the nodes and then integrate a, another free city and the point here is you need the economic backbone i always end up with this build pretty broke early on so you you will notice that you are just hungry for expansion and new troops and all those things so golden mana will be a early game problem that well is just natural for every uh, military heavy culture the fun part about this build is that you are stupidly good at researching due to your extremely high focus into shadow since this is a pure necro build you have a lot of shadow affinity to spend not only it starts off with knowledge extraction we have also extra knowledge from whispering stones so you might want to pick up these and since you have a um, shadow affinity you can have up to three of these and you can gain mana knowledge upon conquering cities 
Death Magic is something I really can re um, recommend as well, because basically, if you have this, as long as your Mana Bolt is full, it's hot to run out of spell casting juice. Dark Vigor is also amazing for this build, because no support, again, faster regeneration, very, very appealing, and Exalted by Shadows is such a powerful thing. And it's really cool, but it is only available for Shadow Heavy builds in a meaningful early um, point of the game. And this is one of those builds that can totally utilize it. And Spying Shadows, well, the most interesting part about this one is, for one, you can acquire it really early with this build. And for the other point, it gives you the ability to just aim map spells, army spells, wherever you want them, because you see the enemy. Also, don't sleep on the right of forbidden knowledge when you need a instant gain of uh, knowledge. And the Crypt Blade has been buffed, so try it out. It's not a weapon, it's a usable item. It's a free action now, which allows you to create a zombie. I point it out because in this build, it is highly synergistic. You also gain access to a lot of chaos things because your chaos affinity isn't that low at all. And Rite of War can be really useful. And apart from that, just uh, every one of these traits along the road, maybe except for Call of Chaos, are really good for your build. It's just a pity that most of these will come into your availability when it's already pretty much not that interesting anymore. This is a very... Um, Good build if you want to either overrun the enemy with tons of cheap units or if you just want to um, chill out with a research victory. There's lots of uh, methods to play it. I can only say necromancers are so much more fun these days, so I can only recommend to try it out. Be free to leave me a comment about what you want to see next. I'm doing lots of builds as you might have already noticed. Leave me a thumbs up and a subscription would be also wildly welcome. Feel free to check out the playlist link down there leading to all the other info videos for Age of Wonders 4 I did. And most importantly, thank you for watching this video. I hope you had a great time and see you soon.